All right, in this tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at how I created uh, this denim jean asset inside of the Substance 3D ecosystem. So, first question I always get is where did this model come from? Um, this model could and can actually come from anywhere. You can make this in a fashion design software like Clo or Browseware or Marvelous Designer. You can model it in Maya, Blender, ZBrush, anything at all that can export either a USD, OBJ, FBX, all that stuff can be imported into a uh, Substance Painter. For this particular um, asset, I went ahead and grabbed it from our asset library. So I just looked under men's classic jeans, got this one. Uh, at, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a middle-aged dad. This is about the cut of jeans that I wear, so perfect for me. Um, so we're gonna dive into it. So first things first, I'm just gonna go ahead and shut off everything that I've gone ahead and created there already. All right, great. Get that turned off. And I will turn it off the same with the buttons because actually the button is where we're going to be starting because by default, the um, the button and the jeans are separate. Oh, and for a heads up too, I went ahead and baked out my mesh maps ahead of time. Um, if you don't know about uh, map baking, shame on you. I you should check out my entire painter, uh, Substance Painter course. I got the link down below this video. I explains it in detail, so we're not going to go into it too much here. All right, cool. So first things first, like I said, we're gonna just focus in on that button. Uh, and the button's gonna be really easy because it's pretty small and it's pretty out of the way. Um, so I'm just gonna start by just adding, I don't know, I'm just gonna put a little gold material on this. And then I'm also gonna drop in because I wanna create um, just like a little uh, logo in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab my own logo. And I can just drag and drop it onto the asset. I'm gonna do it as a mask out of the gate. And you can see at first it's very big as in comparison to the size of this. So we'll go ahead and just drop it down there. Um, and then once we've got a position where we want, now it's gonna be a little bit fuzzy just because it is a very, like if you look at the UV map, it is just a teeny tiny little component on there. So this might be asking too much of it, but we'll see if this works. Uh, and basically what I can do is instead of adjusting it as a color, I'm just gonna adjust it as the height and then just bump it down into it a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and uh, just add, a, uh, as, as if you've ever seen any of my videos before, you'll know that anytime that you're using a black and white image to drive uh, the height of something, you're gonna wanna put a little bit of blur on there. And depending on how small this scale is, it might be just a super fine amount. There we go. All right, cool. All right, and now that we've got that in the place, let's make it a little bit smaller. Great. So little, little, uh, you know, no one will ever see that. Just a little bit Easter egg in there, which I love to drop into my stuff. So, um, very lovely that way. All right, cool. So now on to the jeans themselves. There are plenty of denim materials in the asset library. Like if I go over here and just search for denim, I'm gonna have a few different options to choose from. But for me, I really like this uh, cotton jeans denim worn. I think there's some really good um detail in in the in the pattern there so i'm just going to go ahead and drop that in so i'm going to search for denim head back over to my uh, material tracker here in cotton jeans denim worn i'm just going to drag and drop that onto our, our our pair of jeans here by default it's going to be way too big um and that is because it's just mapping the out to the uv map it's just like straight slapping it on top here so it's not it's not actually um scaling it in any way if you want, all of the assets and everything inside of Substance Painter has a physical size to it. And in order to access that, it, as long as your model is physically the right size, you can just go from tiling to physical size here, and it'll just kind of lock into place. Now, in terms of color, um, this isn't exactly the color that I want. I kind of was thinking of more of a traditional blue jean type color. So I'm just gonna switch this around, uh, maybe go a little bit lighter, a little less saturated, just like something like that. All right, cool. And already out of the gate, we've we've already got a pretty good uh, basis for material. Uh, but this is where Substance Painter kind of distinguishes itself from other software, because this is where you can start to add in a lot of the detail, a lot of the nuance, and really get into the nitty gritty of, of how we're going to make this, uh, take this to the next level. Okay, so the first thing that we wanna do is add some lightening and darkening, because most denim, material nowadays has got some sort of aged or worn look to them so that's what we're going to do first so in order to do that we got to start creating some uh some new layers so what i'd like to do or what 
there's a couple different ways that you can do it. Um, in this particular case, what I can do is I'm just going to um, duplicate this layer. So I'm going to control C, control V, this cotton uh, jeans denim worn, and I'm just going to go a little bit lighter with it. That's the easiest way to do it, most straightforward way to do it. Um, and we can just start right there. Now what I, what I want to do is I want to isolate that to certain areas. So I'm going to go ahead and create a black mask. And then I can either create a paint or a fill. A paint's really handy if I have like some specific regions that I want to uh, paint in. So I can just grab like a little bit of a janky brush and just kind of start painting in the lighter patches where I would want them. But I'm a little bit lazier than that. And I want to use a couple different things. So the first one is I want there to be a little bit of weathering and, and lightning in the material like where, cause that, cause the lightning happenings where, where it gets worn. Um, so that's going to mostly be around the seams. For that, I'm actually going to add a generator uh, to help me out out of the gate. So the generator is going to allow me to grab the UV borders. Um, now, traditionally, again, if this was like a clover browse wear, this would be super easy because all of the clothes are the proper patches. These, like, they're stitched together here and it's just, like, this is just going to help me isolate the, the actual UV border. So it's not perfect, but it's going to it's gonna give me a good start. So uh, to get this view, all I did was held down the Alt key and left mouse button on the mask itself. And now I can start to kind of dial this in. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit um, and just, just kind of get that isolate right around the edges. Sometimes when I'm doing this, I'll just go ahead and just make it like an extreme color just so I can see it. Um, and then I can always, I can always pull that back down where I need to. Um, so I'm, I'm, I want to isolate it in this region here. But the other thing is I don't want it to be like perfect like this. Like I want it to be, um, have a little bit of breakup to it. So inside of this, I'm going to add a fill layer. That's just going to be like a general grunge map. Uh, just something to break it up with a, a smaller, you know, make it a, uh, make a tile down. And then all I want to do is instead of uh, doing it this way, I want to multiply these together. So now you can see it's a little bit broken up in there, right? Um, and then additionally, I want to go ahead and um, I want to grab like a, like a little bit more of this around the side. So I'm also going to go in um, and grab a, a paint layer. And I want this paint to actually add in so I want to linear, linear, linearly dodge this in, and I'm just going to paint down this seam edge. Um, and you know, like I don't actually need the fancy brush for this. I can just use a uh, like a basic soft brush, and I can just go down here. And I'm holding down Shift to kind of um, oh, to kind of follow this seam edge down, something like that. And then we'll go down the other side. Now, based on on your individual use case, this might be like a little bit too big of a brush stroke, or maybe you want to break them up. You can, you can definitely do that too. Like I can go back and now grab a, um, I grab that dirt brush again. I uh, hit the X key to make it minus, and then just kind of go down the side to kind of heat away at that a little bit, kind of break it up if I wanted to. So there's no, there's no shortage of like, there's no limitation to you on the paint strokes. You can do this. I can do this all day, every day. <laughs> break those up all right cool so now that i have like a rough idea of where i want that isolated i'm gonna go ahead and just dial in the color back to to where it was so let's go ahead and use the eyedropper to sample that original color and then just you know even if i want to i can go into the hsv and just bring down the uh saturation and bring up the value a little bit and now you can see oh, it's a little bit a little bit too extreme just like getting some extra wear and tear in there um, additionally, you can you can do that. Uh, it's a very a very very similar thing. Uh, if you want to do some puckering around the side, so like just some uh, like a little bit of pinching too. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this over. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do it differently. I'm gonna create a new layer um, that only is isolated to the height. And then what I want to do is I want to copy this mask and put this mask in here uh, and just say paste into mask. All right, cool. And now I've got this in here and now it like, it's, it's essentially that same thing. Uh, it's just a little bit of, uh, it's just like a, like a little bit of puckering around those edges there. And again, just want to do a little blur. Just to kind of get those, that little, those little bit of imperfections down there. And if I want, like I was just using this as a starting point. If I want to bring these in a little bit and make it a little bit tighter, I can do that too. So yeah. 
All right, cool. Now that we've gotten some lightning in there, I want to also add in, and I'll just, I'll label this height. Only label this lightning. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but I want to like darken it down in the areas that would get darkened. Now this is anywhere where like inside the pockets, any, any like low points in it where you're not, uh, where you're not going to get as much wear and tear out there. So it's almost like the opposite of, of the, um, the, the, the edge points. So for that one, I am going to do it a different way. So for this uh, material, what I can do is I can use this little magic wand and say, add an anchor point. That's going to grab anything from that cotton material um, and, and utilize that. So I'm going to go up here and make a new layer. Instead of selecting a color, I'm going to say grab um, the anchor point of that. And all I want to do is just, just grab that color and I only want to use the color of this one. Now I can use a filter and inside this filter I can use the HSL uh, perspective, the perspective, perceptive. And what I can do is I can uh, darken this down now, maybe add a little bit of saturation too. And so now if, if and the, the benefit of that is if I change the base denim color, this will always be darker than whatever the base denim color is. So you can make this more scalable. And again, we'll change this to darkening. Now, as I mentioned, there you want to get darkening in kind of the crevices and the nooks and crannies. There's a few different ways you can do that. Like I, get, I can go into my smart masks here and find things like, um, uh, we can do like a, like some dirt ones. You know, you can do uh, dirt ground or dirt dusty. I can I can just drag and drop that in here, and that'll create a mask. Um, and uh, give me a mask editor, and I can I can dial in. Um, that darkening here, if I could just increase in the global balance and that kind of thing. I also like to use the generators for this. So generator, I can use a dirt generator, which will really get in like, oh yeah, see that looks good. See a really guy gets into those nooks and crevices and crannies um, and will really help darken out some of that stuff. And again, additionally, if I want to add in just some like random uh, or another random map in there just to get some variation, I can certainly do that as well. Now, another thing about the um, the lightning, and actually I'm gonna move the lightning above the height, uh, just because I, I generally like to do the height and the color on top of that. Um, for the lightning, something happens with them, there's like, uh, it's a term I learned recently, uh, whiskering around the pants, so it's just like those lightened lines um, around there. Um, so for that, I, I had a bunch of these uh, wrinkle mats I got. I, I apologize. I don't remember where they're from. I believe I purchased them on ArchStation. Um, but I mean, again, from somebody else, I can't remember. I apologize. But basically, I could take any one, like if I want to add whiskering, I could just add these in here and drop them into a mask. And I can either make a new layer that with like a, uh, a new, um, a new, uh, version of lightning it, or I can just take what was done in this, in this fill inside the mask. Uh, control X and then drop it into my um, lightning area because we already got that and I can just make that an addition um, and then you could just start building up some uh, some extra ones that way and I could if you want to like stretch this out you can do that um, and then here, I'll show you this too so I'll do that and then um, we could copy this and I'll just kind of flip it around I'll do these quickly um, so you could see have this flip around and then I will slide it over to the other side. Great, so I've got some whiskering and now if I wanted to, I can again, oh, oh not do that, uh, add a paint layer this way and then go in and if I wanted to just like paint some extra extra lines in there or get some, get some, you know, more detail. Like I'm sure, I'm sure there's gonna be good reference for you uh, to pick up on that. So I'm just gonna use those uh, basic um, I'm just gonna use a couple of these maps to get that, but you can see how you, you can build upon that as well. Another element that could easily be added to this, if you want to add some more detail that is traditionally been difficult in 3D, is adding like tears and rips and things like that. There are a couple of different, and again, if I just search for denim inside of here, I've grabbed them already. I, I grabbed a couple of these and it's basically the same method of adding them. So it's this uh, stylized denim and then this denim cut. Uh, so all I want to do is just drag and drop them onto the asset. Now these are SBSAR, so they'll drop in like any other uh, material. They'll drop it on top. I can just scale them down, turn off repeating, and then just position it where I want. Let's see, Let's go which side is the front here. We'll do, yeah, we'll just bring this in here. Oh, it's upside down too. Here we go. All right, cool. 
So for this one, let's see, I just want it on here. Great. And let's see. All right. So if I want this on here, the things that I want to make sure that I am controlling are you can control this mask size if you want. You can control, and actually, let me let me just change out the colors a little bit to match up the how uh, we've got going on in ours. There we go. And you also want to make sure that the. Um, so this is a big one too. Oh, I've already done this. So you want to make sure that your opacity is turned on if you want that rip to be um, exposed and be able to see through to the back of it. So make sure that you've got opacity turned on for that as well. And to do that, yeah, you just go into the texture set settings. You can check your channels. If it's not available here, just make sure that you have PBR metal roughness with alpha blending turned on. Um, I believe it's this one right here because you want it, you want to be able to. Uh, Use that opacity in the in the tear uh, in the torn in the in the torn area right there. Um, so you can either do this down cut. Uh, I believe I also did this torn cut uh, when I was making my version. Again, same thing. Just uh, flip over, scale it, turn off repeat, position where you want. We'll go ahead and yeah, we'll go ahead and turn off. This one, and I'll just use this one for now. Just so you can show the differences. And again, you can uh, change the output size so you can scale this down. You can have control over the string length and all that stuff. And again, it's just really easy to sample the colors that we've already done. The cool thing about this one too, and I had done this before, is you can use the um, just the edge of this on the base of the jean, just to get some additional fraying on there too. Um, and so, yeah, so you can you can do that and again. Same thing. Just make sure the opacity is turned on if you want if you want to be able to see through to the other side of the jean. There's my autosave kicking in. Love the, love the good autosave. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. And then the only last step that I want to add in is if you want to do any uh, seam work or any stitch work, I should say. Um, so for that, you can uh, create, it has to be a paint layer at this point soon. Um, it was announced at GDC that there will be a, uh, you can draw curves onto 3D objects. So that'll be coming soon. But for, for right now, there is a dynamic stitch brush or a couple of them, I should say, that will allow you to uh, paint a stitch line onto this and the stitch will follow the cursor. Um, so you just scroll down into your options. You can select color. I, I always go with a bright red and I'll show you why here in just a second. You can select the thread type um, and then just judging by the size of your brushes, how big the thread is. Um, and then I will go through either the 2D view or the 3D view. And then you can either use your mouse to just kind of swipe it along or you can hold down shift and do a shift select and go, go along this way. Now, the reason why I like to do it as a bright red is because I like to have control over the color after um, after I make my stitch marks. So I can do that by going in and just adding a filter to this. And again, it's that HSL one. And now that I have it as a, as a bright color, I can slide the hue around to select anything that I want and adjust the saturation and the lightness to get it exactly, to get the exact color that I'm looking for. Um, so obviously, you know, when you're doing this, you wanna look at some uh, references to, to know how the stitch work works. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead and uh, add in all of my final stitch work here. All right, so again, so this is the final version that I made. I'll take it through like a little bit of a step-by-step -step here uh, just to kind of recap what was done. So um, bup, 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 again, uh, yeah, so started with the base denim color, uh, added some lighter seams and uh, a little bit of puckering I added down here. Then I wanted to add the whiskering in. Uh, also some just some general lighter patches uh, overall. So that was just in a, in a general grunge map. Then the darkening in some areas. Um, and then I darkened along the curve lines to get some darkening on the interior there. Then I added my stitches. Had a couple of stylized uh, cuts, which I can either add or take away. I'll just leave that one on. And then the final bit, 
again was um, just adding if I, if you want to, and I didn't end up using it. I just ended up doing some fraying down here at the bottom on the backhand side, um, just to just to kind of get some fraying on the on the edge of the pants. But I tried that; I didn't really like it, so I'll just kind of keep them clean for now. So in terms of like rendering this out, again, you can export the maps or the SBSAR in our export textures menu, and then bring that into whatever. Uh, if you were, you know, again, if you're working in Clo or Browse Word, uh, our substance materials work in there. But uh, for this particular case, and just to render out some last images of this, I'm just going to send this over into Substance Stager. Um, again, if you, uh, I always use this minute of passing things over to Stager to remind everyone. If you need to know about Stager, again, I've got a full Stager course. It's free on YouTube and the link uh, in the YouTube link down below. Um, and what this is going to do is it's going to send over the model with all the materials and everything all ready to go. The opacity already all lined up in here. So now I can go in. Um, and again, just create like a really uh, simple uh, stage. And this is, again, just like my default setting for uh, if I wanted to do some product visualization stuff. For this one, I'll actually go ahead and do a third wall. All right, got my little three-walled room set up. I'll just go ahead and take the jeans, rotate them around just a little bit more in the center of my camera. Keep the camera low to make them look heroic. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, yeah, for this, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the, um, the aspect ratio and make them uh, 1920 by 1080. Turn on my ray tracer to see how they look. Awesome, now I wanna go ahead and add just a little bit of depth of field to my camera. Just go ahead and select the pants barrack. Increase depth of field so it'll allow them to kind of fall back in this space there. You know, I'm not crazy, actually, you know, I'm not crazy about this. Uh, this aspect ratio, let's try square one. There we go. That worked a little better, and then I will just put a little bit of a glancing angle on these jeans. There we go. You know what? Like if this was a catalog shop again, let me just try this. Make a little mission in the background there. We will flip these planes around because you can see they're actually emitting light the wrong way. So just spin those around 180 degrees. Whoop. Back in the camera. All right, cool. All right, now we've got a, a lovely shot that can go on a. Uh, I was just going to name a clothing brand company, but we won't do that. A lovely, uh, uh, a lovely apparel website, and we can make another. I'll make another camera here. I'm going to zoom in on some of the details. Proud that I know what whiskering is now. I've come a man in my 40s who's learning new things. So go ahead and just. Uh, focus in on that. There we go. All right, cool. I'll focus on the detail of it. Amazing. So now I've got a couple cameras. And we're going to go ahead and render these out, and we will be all set. So that's it. That is how we rendered it from start to finish. And if you have any questions, like I said, throw them in the comments down below, and we'll definitely address, I'll either address them in the notes, or if you want to see different workflows, make sure you let me know, and we can add them for future tutorials. All right, have fun, everyone.